Hi, welcome to Eagle ID. I'm your host, James Little. And I'm your host, Megan Preston, and we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our show, Eagle ID. On today's episode, we have two very special guests, uh, Chad Jenkins on to talk about his new show, Campus Clock, and William Adams on to talk about the return of his show, More Hits Than Not. Last but not least, we'll have our segment producer, Kyle Cooper, on to talk about his segment. Uh, we'll see you uh, right after this. Welcome back. We're here with our first guest, Chaz Jenkins. So Chaz, uh, what do you want to talk to us about today? Uh, we're going to be talking about my amazing show, Campus Clive. What's Campus Clive about? Campus Clive is about... All right, I'll give you the rudimentary plot. So me and Jordan spent all our student loans on a camera and green screen to make a show to improve one's college experience. And that is what the show's about. What is in the show is all types of stuff. There's references to like MSU in the 90s, there's like inside jokes to like for Convergent Media students, there's references to other shows from like the past and present and it's the core show is just me and Jordan doing things that loosely relate to a certain theme whether it's cooking on campus, housing on campus, classes on campus, anything you can think of that relates to campus life. So um what are, like, uh, what are some of your inspirations for the show? Oh, all types. I mean, there's plenty of memes in it and, and meme culture and internet humor, but actual shows and, and other types of things that inspired me were like Tim and Eric, the Eric Andre show, <laughs> uh, Tom Green, those types of comedians and performers. Their style of humor and their structure around their shows really inspired me to kind of create my own very similar with Campus Clive. What's your favorite thing about Campus Clive so far? So far is all the jokes about our executive producer, Tim Creekmore. They <laughs> crack me up. I just love any opportunity I can to poke fun. Well, if you want an opportunity, what about a joke right now? <laughs> Put um, on the spot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, I think my favorite thing, my favorite Timism is his polos. <laughs> like every time I see him, I'm like, ooh, we're in the red polo today, you know, classic Tim. Or, ooh, got the blue polo today, feeling a little sad. <laughs> My favorite joke I ever made about Tim was when he was showing us this, like, music he used to listen to in his youth. And it was very, like, <laughs> depressing and, and, and techno. And I was like, oh, I can see little Tim in his black polo with his <laughs> eyeliner and just... Oh, uh, feeling it, you know. There you go. That's my favorite. So, um, jokes aside, uh, how did um, how did Campus Cloth get started? Well, so I was on the show more tonight, you know, whatever, and uh, I'm, I was one of the segment producers, and I made this segment about because uh, the theme was campus life, or it's like I, I it, the, the it escapes me now, but it was basically campus life. And I was like, and, I, and one of my other segment producers, Jane Swire, a good buddy of mine, who without him the show would, wouldn't even be a thing because he came up and was like, hey, how about you cook food, but you cook it badly and make like a tutorial video. I'm like, and my mind went racing with ideas. I was like, I got, I knew exactly how I wanted this to look and what it to be. So we went to, to the pod and we bought some Instamac and some ramen <clears throat> and we went to Andrew's in one of their kitchens and we just filmed this ridiculous video about uh, cooking the ramen and cooking the mac and it was all about like how to save money and, and you know cook on campus so you wouldn't have to you know oh, it was just and, the, and people the everyone's favorite part is when I just smash the ramen <laughs> with my fist and it like zooms in and everything but uh, so that was made and went over, over pretty well that's when I was really like experimenting with different types of editing motion tracking and all types of stuff like that. And Jordan Adams comes up to me, he's like, dude, I've been wanting to do a show for MSU TV for the longest time now. And I'm like, of course, me as well. And he's like, that humor and style is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm like, well, let's do it. And then we figured out all the kinks and everything, and Campus Clive was born. I've seen the first episode of Campus Clock, and I can definitely say I prefer it over Morehead to Not, so you did good there. I really appreciate You know, the show's not for everybody, but oh, thank almighty that it's not Morehead Tonight, <laughs> the worst show on MSU TV. 
<laughs> so uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I guess the big thing I want to say is that while there's a lot of in-jokes for that CBM students will definitely get, the humor of the show and presentation, there's something for everybody. Whether it's like we, we play uh, old MSU commercials from the 90s, so anybody who went to school here around that time will get a kick out of like that just to, for nostalgic reasons alone. But there's something for everybody and I, well, I would say that the humor can be off-putting at times. It's, it's definitely worth giving it a chance just because of how ridiculous it is and what it stands for and everything. But you know, give it a watch. And if you don't, that's fine, too. <laughs> well, uh, I really appreciate you coming on, Chaz. And, oh, thanks for having uh, me. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Here with us is our guest, William Adams. So, William, what are you going to talk with us about? Uh, I think I'm here to either talk about Moorhead tonight or uh, some, something to do with like the food shortage in Uganda. One of the two. Whichever you all want to dive into, I'm good to go. Well, I think it might be a little bit more relevant to talk about uh, Moorhead tonight, but we can touch on the Uganda stuff if you'd like. Well, uh, I'm pretty much more in my element if we're talking about Moorhead tonight, so we'll stick with that. All right, sounds good. So what's Moorhead tonight all about? Oh, what's it all about? Um, Alfie, uh, I think that no one gets that reference. Uh, Morehead Tonight is just like a, it's a late night talk show sort of thing uh, in the same vein as uh, the talk shows of yesteryear. Uh, big influence of like Conan O'Brien and Craig Ferguson. I make people touch a monkey to end my interviews. So I feel like I don't know who, no one does that. I don't know why anyone would do that. But um, that sort of, so it's a little sillier than you'd see like a Johnny Carson, but uh, maybe a little more traditional than maybe like a James Corden or something. So how long have you been doing Moorhead Tonight? Uh, this is my second semester doing Moorhead Tonight. We've got uh, one episode in the can already. Uh, for some reason, Tim makes us put these in coffee cans when we get them filming. I'm not sure why. Uh, but of course, my first guests were you two, uh, which comes out uh, by the time this episode's out. People have watched it and, and, and just hated everything that I've done. But uh, so that's my sixth episode. I'm planning to hopefully do four more this semester, bringing my grand total to 10 so far for the year, and then maybe next semester, who knows? So um, what do you hope to like, achieve with uh, Moorhead Tonight? Uh, fame, fortune, <laughs> world domination. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what do I hope to achieve with Moorhead Tonight? I've never been asked that question before. There you go. Uh, I'd like to achieve uh, some sort of experience, you know, just to be able to produce and create something that wasn't there before, right, to sit down and produce and to come up with uh, a show or some sort of artistic creation. I'm an artist at heart, guys. That's what I really am. And so to be able to sit down and create something that wasn't there before is, is a really cool experience. So just to be able to get that kind of under my belt. So how did you get the idea for Moorhead Tonight? If you or anybody else, how did it come about? Well, I was working on a show that was on Moorhead uh, TV called Campus Cops. Uh, I really enjoyed Campus Cops. Uh, but unfortunately, there was up in the air about whether they're going to do another season, so uh, I thought, well, what am I going to do episodes for Campus Cops, or do I want to do my own show? And so I've always loved late-night talk shows. I'm a little older than most students, so I remember watching Johnny Carson as a wee lad and stuff. So I've always enjoyed uh, that genre. So I thought, it's just a natural fit. I might as well do that. And so that's what got the ball rolling. That's really good. So uh, are there any other shows on campus that you enjoy? Well, like I said, I like watching the old episode of Campus Cops. Uh, the last season, I, I worked on that, which is why they sound so good, because I worked the boom mic for it. Uh, I also died twice. I like to tell people that. I mentioned that as many times as possible. I died twice on Campus Cops, which most people don't get to do. So I was glad to do that. So I enjoy that, that show. Uh, I like watching some of the older, like, major minutes. Uh, I think we're doing one. We're not we. I'm not involved in it. But <laughs> Moorhead is doing one of those. Uh, but I, I like a lot of the, a lot of the shows. Uh, they're starting to green light some shows I don't quite understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this guy named Chad Jennings, I think is his name, has a <laughs> show called Campus Clife. I don't know. What are you going to do? You know, they're just giving shows to anybody at this point. You go in front of a green screen. I don't know. You hit some symbols together or something. I'm not really. I don't get it because it's not. I think it's like too low. It's under, under my radar in terms of intelligence level. So, uh, you know, it's going downhill a little bit. But hopefully Eagle ID can, you know, help me as Moorhead tonight raise the standard for MSU TV. We'll sure try to. Yeah, uh, I've seen the first episode of Campus Cloth and I can definitely say more, I'd prefer Moorhead tonight. 
that's good. You should. For, I, and you know what I like is Eagle ID because you guys have pagan symbols and stuff <laughs> on your table. I don't have these on my show. I don't have any. I need to get something like this or like a little brass pig or something. That would be great. I thought the monkey what was pretty interesting. Here? I really loved it. I love the. I love that too. I also don't have enough literature on my show. Washington Irving's works. His entire works. One book. The guy works all that time. One. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I think that we together can work together to keep Moorhead TV afloat and uh, keep Tim employed. All sorts of great things that can come from that. I think we shall try to. Okay. We really appreciate having you on today. Thank you. Thank you. And more when we get back. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Here's another segment of Field ID. Enjoy. MSU has many shows for students dedicated to different things. Art This, co-hosted by Professor Stephen Milton and John Modaff, takes a more Bob Ross approach. The show, which has been on for six years, features various artists showcasing their unique talents. We've had uh, ventriloquist painters, ceramicists, uh, a straight jacket escape. Oh yeah, artist. we had a magician. A straight, magician. Straight, that might be my favorite, the straight jacket escape. He did all sorts of parlor tricks and things in here. Yeah. Sammy Lowe and the ventriloquist, the first time he was on, was pretty cool too. Yeah, that was a, a, certainly a key mm -hmm. learning, very memorable. And then having a band out of Lexington called RC and the Oh, Nations. that's right, that's right. But the average age, I think, was about 70. <laughs> <laughs> and I just about had to use ambulances to get the band <laughs> They sat down and got together. Oh, yeah. It was probably the hottest band we've had in here. While Milton and Modaf enjoy being a part of the program, they understand that the show is not for them. It's for the students. Well, uh, when we first came together, um, we felt uh, maybe we could lend our talents to MSU TV to help others learn. And so we could provide uh, years of, of doing video production, Dr. Modaf teaching, doing his audio production work. We were comfortable hosting, so we thought maybe we could step in and, and, and host and let other students learn the more simpler nuances of camera work and lighting, and then we can we can be solid hosts and produce and bring some people in. So it's taught me to uh, to work with, with with young people and, and to help spread any knowledge I have back to them. Yeah, and it's seeing a new crew every semester uh, keeps us humble and it also helps us to learn how to describe what it is we're shooting for. Uh, and, we, and then once we get it all settled, the next semester it all starts over. That's right. So it's, it's instructive to us to help refine our ability to describe what it is we want as producers. But it's also uh, really impressive to watch how fast people get up to speed. That's right. And because ours isn't the only show they do. So it's, it's been pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, raised our expectations for students because we see what students are capable of. They encourage any students who want to learn about broadcasting to work on the show. If you're, you need to take a practicum and you're brand new here, I, I would invite you to come out and uh, you know we, we find the guests and, and we produce from, from the sense of finding the guests and, and getting the talent on. It's, a, it's an easy show I think to jump in and feel comfortable with. Yeah. And there are opportunities for field production too, for people who want to do independent production outside. And uh, also artists and performers. If you liked what happened with Dr. Willis here today and check out some of our other shows on YouTube, you'll see we're good to people. We have fun, but we're good. Right. Uh, and you want to come on yourself or you want to suggest to a friend, come on, have them get in touch with one of us or Mr. Creekmore or Carrie Hall, our great director, and we'll do what we can to get you out. Be sure to check out this show and many others like it on MSU TV. This is Kyle Cooper for Field ID. Welcome back. We'd like to thank everyone who has tuned in to watch this episode. We'd also like to thank our very wonderful guests for coming on, and we'd like to thank Kyle Cooper for his segment this week. And on a side note, Eagle ID is the best show on MSU TV. So we'll see you next week on another episode of Eagle, Eagle ID. ID.